Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Draw, Make, and Code. I'm your host, Ed Cavett. And have you guys heard about the Parker Solar Probe that just went through the corona of the sun? And <laughs> Just an incredible feat. It's like, how didn't it melt? What did it see? There's just so many questions that it asks and hopefully answers. And in the course of learning about this, NASA has some animations that it presents to, to visualize what's going on. And some of those animations are really cool. I, I think all of them are, but one of them was particularly interesting because it looked like something I could do in code in P5.js. So I took to the challenge of trying to make this solar animation. Let's take a look at the output. In the center, we have a circle. That's the body of the sun. Pretty easy, one shape printing it in the canvas in the center there. And then around that is a, a halo. This is a gradient of color. So that's a little bit more processing there. That's the corona. And then the solar winds coming off of it are the rays that go around are Perlin noise waves. And they're made in such a way that I can increase the magnitude of them as they move away from the sun. And then I can increase the magnitude of all of them at the same time and decrease it as well. This takes up a lot of processing, so there's ways of doing this that kind of speed things up, but even so, when it's running, it's a little clunky. So when I do these tutorials, I usually have the output running while I'm typing in the program. I can't do that here because the browser's too chunky when I do that, so I'm going to end up shutting off the output, and then we'll just have to imagine what what's going on from what I've just shown you here. So here's basically the program that you're going to get. Links are in the description. Uh, it's a little bit different because I, I switched horses in the middle of the race making this video. I was typing the program from my notes and I realized I could do something a little bit more efficient. So I just made that change in the middle of recording the video. So I'll, I'll show you that when I get to it. But to start, we're going to use uh, the P5JS editor, start a blank sketch and each ray going around the sun is an object. So we need an, uh, a variable to hold it, and uh, we need to keep track of which ray it is so we know where to put it. So we have an index value, and the corona, the atmosphere, is being created with a loop. And I'm going to set that up in setup. But So I don't have to go through that loop every frame. I'm just going to draw it to a graphics page and then print that graphics page on top of the canvas. And hopefully that will uh, give us the appearance of the halo there without costing the extra processing of drawing the loop. But I think it's going to be a little bit faster just to draw the graphics page. So inside setup, let's use the available window width and window height. We're going to set uh, sun equal to a new instance of SunMaker. Then let's set up our graphics attributes and next let's set up that graphics page. I'm going to use a variable IMG to hold that graphics page and then use the dot syntax to change any graphics attributes on the page itself. I'm going to run through a loop. It's uh, going to run from zero to a certain size of radius. And then each time through the loop, I'm going to draw a circle with no stroke, just the fill. And it's going to have some alpha and then each circle gets stacked on top of the other a little bit larger and it creates this gradient going from the center outward and it can just kind of fades as it goes to the outside. Once I set that to the graphics page, I don't have to worry about it any longer. I can just print the graphics page on top of the canvas along with my other output and I'll have this halo. So now that we have everything set up in draw, it gets a little bit messy sort of. We have to really keep track of how the output is going to change the elements depending on how they're printed on the canvas. So organizing our output in the proper layers is important. Also, we're translating to the center of the screen. There's a way that I can display the graphics page with its origin at the center, but by the time I do that, I can just subtract out the change in the coordinates of the image call. So when I drop my graphics page down, the coordinates aren't going to be zero, 00 because that's going to shift it down and to the right. So I just reverse the translation and it's going to be where it needs to be. Next, because I'm moving the loop isn't moving through index values, it's moving through radians and it's skipping so many radians so that it gets a number around the sun. 
if I do that, I don't have an index value to access in order to tell the function which wave it's on. So I need to let i equal negative 1, and then I'll just increment i an integer, send that into the update method of the SunMaker function, and then it knows which ray it's on, and it can be in position to do that. Once we have all the rays made, then we can put the body of the sun on top of all of the output. It's the brightest part. It's going to cover up everything. Once that's done, inside the function there's a, a variable called this.rot that's controlling where the wave is on which radian around the sun. I'm going to set that, that back to zero, and then when I run through the loop that's going to draw each one of the, the rays, it's starting at zero, it's going to get through the loop, it's going to be at the last ray, start over, rinse and repeat. Inside the function, we're going to start the variables with an X offset and a Y offset for our noise, because the rays are waves. And the Y offset can be an array so that we can stylize the rays. We can have them move all in unison, or we can have them offset slightly, or we can have them all radically different from one another. We're controlling where that ray is around the sun using a rotational value, so we want to keep track of that. The rays have a length that they're moving away from the sun, so we need a proportion of the width for that. Each segment is a certain size, so we need a variable to step through that wave by its segments. And the wave is a certain height, so we're going to take that length of the wave, a proportion of it, and that's going to be the height of the segment at any given point. Then because we want the wave to change in magnitude, to grow bigger as it gets further away from the sun, we need a variable that's going to grow larger, and then we can just multiply the size of the segment by this growing number. Then inside the loop, we're going to do this just like we would a regular 2D noise wave. Uh, at the beginning of the loop, I have a variable i equals 0, 1. That should be i equals negative 1, and then it should not be there <laughs> because it's not doing anything. So it's a double mistake somehow. I managed to do that. Quite an accomplishment. Inside the loop, i plus equals i plus equals 0 0.1. That shouldn't be there either. It's not really doing anything. I think it was left over when I was testing things out. So once we've established that those things don't need to be there, just ignore them. And then inside the loop itself, we're going to just be doing our traditional 2D wave stuff, except for we're not going to be using begin shape and end shape and vertex. Instead, we're going to be using uh, a previous XY, and we're going to draw a line from our current point to a previous one. OK, now we're ready to do the method of the function, this.update. We're going to pass into it which index it's on, which wave it's on that of the rays going around the sun. Then we're going to move into position. So we're going to rotate by a coefficient of pi. If you change the number of rays, you're going to have to adjust that a little bit. Once we've uh, done that, we're going to isolate any changes to the translate and rotate inside push and pop. Then we're going to translate to the center of the canvas, which is already at the center. So we're just going to set that to 0, 0. And then when we rotate around that point, it's going to rotate the center around the center of the canvas. Then we're going to rotate that increment amount of rotation so we know which ray position we're at. Then we're going to go through our procedures for the 2D noise wave. We're going to set the X offset to zero. We're going to set the uh, segment magnifier, the, th uh, the part that's going to increase the magnitude of the segments as it moves away from the sun. We're going to set that to its initial value. Then instead of doing a begin shape and end shape and vertex, we're just going to forget that. But we are going to do our loop. We're going to figure the, the change in magnitude using linear interpolation. And we're going to fix that to its segment along the wave. Next, we're going to get the Y position, the change in height of this wave. And we're going to send into the parameters of noise the X offset, the unique Y offset, which is in an array. And then the parameters for the height of that wave is going to be that changing variable. Then in order to get the previous value, we can just copy that statement and subtract out any changes. But this is really process-intensive and not a very good use of code. 
there's a much easier way and a simpler way to do this. Because I'm using local variables, I can't do it that way. I have to change to a global variable. What I'm going to do is set assign a local variable to hold the current value before I change it and then change the current value. And then I have a current value and a previous value to draw a line segment to. I can't use the local variable for Y because I'm using a local variable to assign uh, Y to it. And if it's not already happened yet, <laughs> then there's nothing to send into it. So I'm just going to go up to the top of this function, create a function variable, use that for the Y, and then I can use a local variable to capture or store the Y value before I change it, and then that becomes the previous value. Does that make sense? It's kind of a standard way of doing your previous values. So once I've figured out an easier way to do this, <laughs> let's describe what's happening. I'm using a function variable that's going to store the current Y, and then right before I change that Y, I'm going to store it into a, a local variable called prev Y, and now I have my current and previous position. If I just printed the output, generated the output now without any stylization, it's not going to look very interesting. So let's stylize things a little bit based on its position away from the sun and uh, over time. So with some local variables, we're going to adjust the alpha based on where it's at in the, the wave. So if it's closer to the sun, it's going to have a stronger alpha. And if it's further away from the sun, it's just going to fade out. The color, we're going to use a, a noise wave to get the color, and that's going to be uh, fixed to the same X offset and Y offset. So it'll be kind of in unison with how the wave is moving. And then the thickness of the wave is going to be thinner, closer to the sun, thicker uh, away, each segment is. And then all of the waves, the thickness can change in unison. So I can get this kind of like increasing intensity, decreasing intensity in the magnitude of the waves. And that's what top thick is doing. Thick is going to adjust uh, each segment thickness and top thick is going to adjust all of the rays at the same time using a sine wave, just going back and forth through thick to thin, thick to thin. Once we have all of those variables ham hammered out, we can put in our color, we can put in our stroke weight, and then we can draw a line from our current position to the previous position. To get our previous x, we're just going to subtract out the increment uh, from the current x, and that will give us our previous x position, and then the previous y is coming from the local variable. Once our line's drawn, that's like our vertex segment, now we can go through the rest of the 2D noise wave procedures, advance the x offset, outside the loop, advance the y offset, and then close the shape, which we don't have to do here. I think I put in a statement like I was going to close it like when I, I did have the begin and end shape in this program and then I took it out but I didn't take out the graphics attributes for the shape and then when I was going through my notes I just went through the motions and typed in the stroke weight but it, it's not doing anything it doesn't need to be there we can take that out too so let's test it and see how we did <laughs> Y is not defined. So when I jumped off one horse, uh, I left something behind here. I've used Y in the, the line, but I didn't change it to a function variable. So let's change that and run it and see how it works. And I think it's working. <laughs> Just that one little mistake there. All right, Solar Winds Animation, inspired by the Parker Solar Probe launched by NASA in 2018, has just traveled through the corona of the sun. What an amazing feat. And people are inspired by this feat uh, a lot because of the animations, the visualizations that accompany these uh, missions, because you really don't get to see it doing its thing. We did get a little bit of video of the Solar Winds that was uh, sent from the probe itself, but most of what we know about it or what we're seeing of it comes from the visualizations. That's people trying to understand what this what these systems look like and then putting them in some kind of platform where it can be created essentially with code. So that's what this video is about, that you can 
visualize these things fairly easily with just a few procedures. And if, if you're not sure how to do that, there are lots of resources out there that will help you. And I hope I can be one of those. So if you enjoy videos like these, if you appreciate this as a resource, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, say hello. That tells the algorithm to serve this content to as many people as are willing to watch it. And also it helps support me, keeps me going. And, uh, I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, take care. Thank you.